My name is Jeff Schloss. I'm a program director at the National Human Genome Research Institute, which is part of the National Institutes of Health. Uh, at at uh, NHGRI, I, uh, my main uh, activity is running a grants program uh, for developing new sequencing technologies. We call it revolutionary sequencing technologies, trying to reduce costs by four orders of magnitude uh, from what they were when we started the program in 2004. Uh, and it's uh, routinely called the $1,000 Genome Sequencing Technology Program. Uh, our main purpose it, at the National Human Genome Research Institute is to sequence human genomes to understand better the, uh, uh, the uh, role that genome sequence plays in health and disease. What we're really pushing for now is to be able to do what we call de novo sequencing, that is, uh, without any assumption about, about what the sequence is, uh, without a model, that is, uh, just go in and uh, sequence entire genomes of people. Uh, um, essentially from one end to the other. The reason we want to do that is that we're finding that there are rare changes that are not that rare, that is not commonly found in the genomes of large numbers of people that appear to be more and more important in, uh, uh, in contributing to disease states. And so having completed a human genome sequence, uh, we said this, this endeavor is just beginning. We really need to be able to sequence many genomes, genomes of many people, genomes of many other organisms, and the other organisms help inform us about the structure and function of the human genome. We want to sequence genomes of many individual humans uh, to see the, the, where they're the same and where they're different, and then build those correlations between health and disease that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the first step to use that data is to be able to understand, look for the correlations between changes in genome sequence and specific disease states. So we'll take, uh, 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 for, for a complex disease like heart disease or diabetes, we'll take a large number of people, perhaps 1,000 or 5,000 people who have symptoms of the disease and another similar number of people who don't have their, that disease. And we will compare those genomes from all those different people, ideally the complete genome sequences of, of the large numbers of people and look for what we call an association between particular changes in the genome sequence and having or not having the disease. Once we gain that kind of knowledge, then we can sequence the genomes of individuals long before they may show symptoms of a disease. And we, we could look into their genome and say, well, you have these particular changes in your genome. You need to monitor because you have a high likelihood of having this disease later in your life. So we need to monitor. Uh, you may be able to make changes in lifestyle, your eating habits, your exercise habits, and so forth. Um, and uh, so this is, this is what we are talking about, sort of the first steps in personalized medicine, is to be able to look into an individual's genome and uh, determine what diseases they are more likely to get than other people are likely to get and uh, uh, try to mitigate the uh, development of that disease for that individual. Another uh, major use that's emerging already uh, for, uh, for genome sequencing is to look at uh, adverse drug interactions or, uh, or non-drug interactions. So we know the, the sequences of many of the genes that are responsible for drug metabolism. And uh, we've made associations between particular sequences in those uh, in, in those drug metabolism genes and the ability of a particular person to be able to metabolize that drug and for the drug to have an effect. Uh, if that person can't metabolize that drug and break it into the needed uh, subcompounds that would have the pharmacological effect, there's no point in giving that patient that drug. It's not going to work for them. Now what doctors do is they'll give a patient a drug that works in a lot of people and try it out and see if it works for that individual. If you can find out that drug's not going to work for that individual. You'd be rather find that out early and not have to test it out. And just move on to another drug. Uh, and as I say, adverse drug reactions, there are some uh, people who would metabolize a drug and uh, those for that individual, the uh, breakdown products could be toxic. You don't want to give that individual that drug. So for pharma, this is called pharmacogenomics and uh, it's already being used um, for uh, 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 for, for certain drugs. Uh, for particular diseases, 
we know that if you have the disease because of a particular change in your genome versus another change in your genome, a particular drug will or won't work for you. So again, if you have that disease uh, and you have that form of the disease, this particular drug will work for you, another particular drug won't work for you. So these are just some examples of how we believe that it will be possible to use genome sequence uh, in, in a predictive manner that's tuned to the sequence of that individual and, uh, as I say, making changes in their uh, monitoring for diseases or the drugs that they could take or, uh, or uh, even potentially uh, uh, warning them uh, that a particular lifestyle change might be particularly advantageous for them. This is really going to uh, require the ability to sequence large numbers of genomes. It costs about $650 million to sequence the human genome if you add it all up. This was going on uh, over a number of years all around the world, um, and the technology was developing as that time went on. And so it, we, we uh, uh, calculated that if one sequenced the human genome at the end of the human genome project, so sort of an instantaneous cost, it would have cost somewhere between 10 and $50 million. And so we said, well, what if we could reduce costs by two orders of magnitude f five years from now. So the cost would go from roughly uh, $10 million down to $100,000 in five years. And what if we could reduce the cost another two orders of magnitude five years after that? And that's really where we got, get this idea of the $1,000 genome. Uh, and so, so we launched a program in, in, uh, at the end of the Human Genome Project to try to do that. Um, the new technologies uh, were being developed in uh, academic labs, in companies, and uh, remarkable progress has actually been made. Um, the, uh, the goal to reach the two order of magnitude cost reduction to $100,000 uh, uh, was actually met probably about a year early. And we're on track actually to meet the $1,000 genome goal probably uh, uh, a year and a half to two years early.